How's it going guys and welcome back to another video in this one we're going to be going over the map painting techniques that we used for this desert scene so let's jump into it first off we've got the tracking so we've got our tracked camera done in blender from the footage we've got our tracking markers all set up so what we do here is i just set up a gray box and that allows me to work out where I'm going to place all my geometry in the scene. So we start putting in the 3D models. So I got this one from a website, just downloaded the statue. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some texture to it just to begin with, just to get an idea. And then I start warping the model around so I don't get anything like poking through. This was a free model so after all. I look at some reference and what I'm trying to do is build out like an accurate looking statue. So I make a base that looks like it would hold it with some interesting detail and an interesting silhouette. I then move on to modeling and sculpting uh, the different kind of things you'd see on this statue in this area. So I've got an idea in mind of what I want the overall scene to look like and I'm taking inspiration from different things like this shield which I use this photo to turn into a displacement map so I use the displacement modifiers in Blender and then bring that in and use it on displacement map limited dissolve and you see it crashes but we come back we fix that up we limited dissolve it and reduce the geometry I get some interesting shapes so after that the next thing i want to do is well a little adjustment to the position but then i move on to the dagger so i wanted to make it so he had something in his hand and in this case i did like a little curved handled dagger so i just modeled that out and then added some more subdivisions and then sculpted in some little filigree so just detailing it up to make it look interesting so i've got reference on the other screen while i'm doing this and that's how we get this 3d model looking a lot more realistic in this so then we look at adding in the other 3d models so i add some obelisks so i wanted to add some of these in just to give a bit more depth to this image and add a bit more to the matte painting uh, I could have done a bit more with these, but I felt like I should just keep it simple because I was doing this for stream. And in the end, I just had to think about how the light was going to interact and how I was going to do the capture of light. I ended up deciding I was going to do it in Nuke, but it was something important to decide before I went to render. So after these were done, I set up my scene and got it ready for render and sent that bad boy off. And then we jump in to Nuke. So in Nuke, this is where we build out our 3D render again using the diffuse and gloss, but separating them out. So adjusting their color individually using cryptomats. As you can see here, I'm grading the statue to fit the scene properly and setting this all up. So then I'm just slot in my projections where I need them in the diffuse map. And then from here, we're gonna jump into Photoshop and paint on one of our frames. So in Photoshop, this is where we add in our textures and stuff. We don't quite get from the 3D, but it's just quicker to do in map painting. So I look at a lot of references, have a look at statues, find where the grime, the cracks, the build up is, and I add that in. So I prepare a couple of cracked images and I finesse them into place just to add that texture in throughout the image. I then do some hand painting of some of the dirt and grime where I think it will turn up. And I add that all to the image. I then use a diffuse map and throw that over the top just to add a little bit more texture because all this map painting that I'm doing right now is going in between. So as you can see, all the lighting goes over the top. So we don't lose any of that lighting when we're map painting. Do the same with the base and voila. I then move on to the background. So this is the fun part for me. Put that in, grade it, get it looking nice and integrated. After that, that's kind of where I get a little bit distracted for a moment because I get fixated on trying to see how I'm gonna do the shadow for these pillars. So I spend a bit of time redoing in a grade and 
and adding in those shadows. I then go back to Photoshop, add in the same texture over those pillars just to add that extra detail. And I make sure that works in Nuke. And then I'm jumping back into Photoshop to add in our castle slash city. So I did a little bit of research, have a look around, find some buildings that I like and want to integrate. I did a little bit of searching on Google Earth, a great resource for doing location scouting. I grab some images, prepare them by cleaning them up and removing stuff I don't want, the fringing, all that kind of fun stuff. So a little bit of monotonous work, but it has to be done to get a good image. Um, once I've got these prepared images, I start bringing them together. So another one of this same area and I use that to integrate together. I use a bit of the cliffside nearby use that to blend it together. And this is the important part of matte painting, grading. So you want everything to look like it fits together. So I can have things that are different graded, but as long as like the shadows are on the right side, I can generally finesse them to look like they belong together. So in this case, I'm just grading everything to fit the same hue, saturation, brightness, all that kind of stuff. And then we bring all of that back into Nuke. Flatten down so we get our separate elements and we set up our projections. So we take our 3D models out of Blender, we bring them into uh, the Nuke scene and use a 3D project onto it and set that into our render. So everything's getting put into place where it needs to be. So one of the problems I did face when going through this was my camera was a little bit funky and then I also forgot that I hadn't textured the shield. So I went back, added that back in and brought that again back into Nuke and we fixed it. Then we got our last problem. The fun job that everybody loves. So here I had to roto out a lot of things. Mostly this front mountain and the background mountains, but it was a day's worth of work. And to do that, what was required was going through frame by frame almost and cutting out this mountain. So did it for the foreground pillars to make sure that they weren't seen in front of our plate footage. And then I had to do it for the statue and the background mountains. So I did all the background mountain. And then I had to come back, do more of the front mountain because it was also overlapping the background. So there was a lot of roto and it was a very tedious thing to do. But roto makes images look so good. So a lot of pain for a lot of game. But... By doing Roto, I'm no professional, but I went through and got that all done and made this image look super good. And you'll see the end product in just a second, but first, make sure to like the video, subscribe, and if you're feeling generous, comment because it helps a lot. I'm new to this, I'm looking to post more videos on the regular and show some people what can be done. So let me know in the comments what you'd like to see and explain more. And here's the results. Thanks again for watching, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell and drop a comment below on what you want to see next video or if you want something explained in a future video. Thanks!